What we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to talk a little bit about scenarios. Scenarios are conceptual flow diagrams within your project that do not affect the functionality of your simulation. However, they are helpful in the initial stages of your project to explain to your stakeholder how their requirements are being met by this scenario within the functionality of your simulation. So let's create an example. Let's go to File, New, and you can also get here by using Control N, and we're going to name our project Fireworks Depot, which is going to be a fake fireworks store that's going to go online. And if you're not aware, Fireworks Depot's tagline is, Boom, boom, shake, shake the room, come to Fireworks Depot soon. Now that we have our new project created, you can see here in the uh, chapter categories that we have a scenario and a page one already created in our new project. And within that scenario is our page one already. So the first thing I want to do is I want to rename our scenario as sitemap. And I'm going to rename page one as home page. Now, within this scenario, I want to add two more pages really quickly. And how we do this is we can click and drag a page widget onto our scenario, and it automatically creates pages for us. Now, I'm going to rename this page Contact Us, and I'm going to rename this page Store. As you can see in the uh, directory over here, when we add in new pieces to our scenario, it automatically creates tangible chapters within our project. And what we can do from our scenario is that if we actually double click on an item within the scenario, it actually goes to that specific chapter that has been cre created within our scenario. So even, even though we didn't really do anything except add it to our scenario, it is a tangible item and we can add design and functionality to it. So back to our sitemap scenario. So I'm going to move these items around just a little bit. And we know that the home page is going to link both to the store and to contact us. And how we create flow arrows is just by dragging one item onto another item. Now, if I click and drag onto the next page, and before dropping it, hold down Alt, that will actually create a tangible link within the page. So, for example, if I go to home page right now, you can see it's got a link there for go to contact us. So if I was to execute this simulation, that link would actually go to the contact us page. Now this may not be the ideal situation that you want to do because we know down the line that we'll probably be adding in functionality and links and that link really doesn't make any sense for us right now. But it's just an option that you have within the scenario piece. I guess one other item that we can do really quickly, ha, huh, obviously, is we can drag the start to the home page. Again, it doesn't really do anything. It's just uh, making our flow look more valid. So within the home page, I know that I'm going to want to log in. And to represent the login in a flow, we're going to use a decision. And I'm going to name that decision valid login question mark. Now decisions are the ways we guide users to different paths within our application based on the data that they enter or the choices within the application. For a more nerdy explanation, it's a lot like if-then logic in programming. So this decision is going to have two paths. One path will go to my home and the and the other path is going to go to a login page now what we want to do with this is we know that the login is going to be accessible via the home page so we're going to drag the home page onto the valid login now if it is a valid login that user is going to go to my home and if it's an invalid login it's going to go to the blank login page Again, in adding this decision to our scenario, we have also added in the valid login decision within our project so that we can address it later once we're ready to uh, create that decision logic. One thing we can do within our scenario is we can actually color code these items. So if we had some sort of color scheme that says, you know, all of our decisions are going to be green, any path from a decision is going to be orange, uh, we can make those decisions and actually have some sort of color representation for the pieces within our scenario. 
Now, the next item is uh, within the store page. We know that within the store that we are going to have a shopping cart process. But to keep this scenario clean, what I want to do is just put in a representation of that shopping cart process and make it a different scenario altogether. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop scenario onto our sitemap scenario and I'm going to name that shopping cart. Then I'm going to click the store page and drag that onto that scenario. Now as you can see again, adding in a scenario creates a new scenario for a shopping cart. So when I was ready to create the scenario for the shopping cart, we've already got it created and then can just start adding in elements. So back to the sitemap scenario. Our final piece in this scenario is the contact us page. And what we want the contact us page functionality to do is first when someone submits a contact us form, it's going to check whether or not that they are a valid user on the system, either by them entering in their username or them already being logged in. So we're going to click and drag a decision under contact us and we are going to drag the contact us onto the decision rename that decision valid member question mark and this isn't necessarily going to have any branches of logic other than behind the scenes it's just going to check if that's a valid member and then send an email and how we're going to represent that is with a cloud so I'm going to click and drag a cloud onto the scenario and drag the valid member decision onto the cloud. Then rename the cloud, send email. Now what clouds do is not anything specific, but they basically show backend processing in an application, such as a database record being saved or a credit card transaction being made. They can also represent something that happens outside the system, like a representative makes a phone call to the client or a loan gets notarized. So let me double click on this cloud just to show you what it looks like within iRise Studio. Um, you can add anything to a cloud just like you would a page, but the cloud doesn't have any necessary functionality unless you want it to. If something changes in regards to requirements and the cloud actually needs to become a page, you can easily convert that page by going into the properties panel of the cloud and clicking convert to page. One final thing that I want to add in here uh, to my scenario is what happens after someone goes to my home. I'm going to add in a couple pages. One, I'm going to edit information. So let's say a user logged in and they wanted to change their address. And then I'm also going to add in a confirmation that their items were changed. And for confirmation I'm going to make that color blue. So I'm going to drag my home to edit information edit information to the confirmation page. Now one final item that I want to make sure I drive home is that uh, pages that have been created within the scenario can be reused in the same scenario. So let's say for example that after they get their confirmation they only want them to go back to the home page. I can quickly re-add home page by just clicking and dragging that chapter into my scenario and then you know, just like all others, clicking on one page and plopping it onto another. And that's really it for scenarios. Uh, they'll definitely be revisited in later tutorials around the creation of templates. Because once you create a template within iRise, you can reuse that template over and over to create new pages without having to recreate your design or functionality. So be looking for that later on. Thanks for flying in to mockflock.com.